Hello and welcome to another edition of Humble Theology. My name is John. Today we're looking at the book of Revelation, chapter 17. And like usual, let's read it and see what we have. Uh, so Revelation, chapter 17, starting verse 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came to me, came and said to me, Come and I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality, and with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on the earth have become drunk. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus." When I saw her, I marveled greatly. But the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast with the seven heads and ten horns that carries her. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. And the dwellers on earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will marvel to see the beast, because it was, and is not, and is to come. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. They are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen. One is, and the other has not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain only a little while. As for the beast that was and is not, and is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven and goes to destruction. And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. These are of one mind and they hand over their power and authority to the beast. They will make war on the lamb, and the lamb will conquer them. For he is the Lord of lords and king of kings, and, who's with, and those with him are called and chosen and faithful. And the angel said to me, The waters that you saw where the, prosti where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes of nations and languages. And the ten horns that you saw, they are the be they and the beast will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. So, Revelation 17, a uh, quick commentary then on that. In 1 through 6, I mean, basically we have all this symbolism and metaphors and synonyms for evil. Uh, this great prostitute or false prophet uh, being depicted in this kind of sixth vision of destruction. Uh, and I say that because... at the end of the day it says well they make war on the lamb and basically on, on god's people uh, but the lord of lord and king of kings conquers them so again another loss another view of the loss for satan his end the end of his reign and uh, things of him i mean it, it echoes of when we talk about god and we say him who was and is and is to come well, here in these passages, we have Satan trying to be a tweak of that as it talks about the beast from the bottomless pit being described as uh, that was, is not, and is to come. So it's kind of like a reflection or a reverse of the terminology. Um, it's, it's a picture of satanic stuff in all ages. Um, we always see these types of things where governments... Uh, 
basically collude, you could say, with satanic forces and push their agendas. That's always being pushed against Christianity, against the church. Uh, you may go to work, school, whatever, and you think, well, everything's just the way it is. And, you know, there's sort of a neutrality to things in the world. But it's not. It's spiritual warfare all day, every day. Satan trying to get his one up on God all the time. And God and his church surviving age after age, abiding by these warnings. And about this then, from a warning perspective, and that's just it, from an all-millennial perspective, we don't get caught up in the, the rapture and you know Israel and reinstituting sacrifices and, and all these kinds of things and, and real beasts roaming around with some weird woman riding on top of them. You know, the, these weird literal trying to work in things here. I mean, it's, it's symbolic. It's governmental powers, it's forces, princes and principalities, as, as the scripture says. And these are the things that always come up against God and his church. But we're shown their end. So like we've been saying for the, the seven churches in the first three chapters of Revelation, it's a warning. Don't compromise with evil. Don't get caught up in it in any way, shape or form, especially in false teaching and immorality. Why? because there's an end to those things. Don't get caught up in their end. Um, be the, the remaining in verse 14, be those from who we belong to the Lord of Lord, King of Kings, because it says, and those with him are called chosen and faithful. The church are the chosen people of God. Um, they have been so since the beginning of the world. Um, we heard that in the beginning verses here. Uh, da, 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 in verse 8, uh, the beast from the bottomless pit goes up to the destruction. And yet within this picture, it says, And the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see it. So, so the world, the lost, they, they marvel at satanic things. The, the, the powers and, and swayed by money and corruption and immorality and all that kind of stuff. They, they love it. They, they go after it all the time. It, it's what they want. It, it's what they think fills their soul and their time and purpose and being. Um, but it's not. And God has left them in their sin. They are not in the Lamb's book of life. Um, and, and so that's, that's their end. And so the warning for the church is kind of like through all of scripture stop compromising with the world stop playing footsie with the world and getting caught up in the things because their end their road is leading them to destruction ours is supposed to be le learning and leading to our life with christ our unity with god and in that you know our sanctification we should be coming more godlike all the time pushing off the world um, as the hymn says you know the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace so that's it. it's a short summary here um, of what's going on i mean again there's a lot of books out there that will try to go into from a, a dispensational perspective you know, oh, the ten horns are this, and the seven this, and this, and they try to match up all these things from the Bible to like the newspaper and and, and people in power or nations and things like that. But it, scripture doesn't warrant us doing that. It's telling us clearly a warning. You read scripture for who's doing what, what are they saying, what happens to them, and so in that stream of thought, we have evil running amok, but yet as much as they try to go against god against jesus the lamb it, he ends up conquering them and that's what we're supposed to see in every age we're not supposed to be sitting around twiddling our thumbs going is this the end is this the end is it is it this is it our age now because everybody's thought that from christian persecution ages of the middle ages world war one world war two yeah maybe we're facing world war three but will we come out of it well, probably somebody will, and they'll be left with, oh, well, Christ didn't come back. Well, now what? Well, now you still abide by these warnings. Whenever you see corruption, whenever you see evil, not only are you to flee from it, but you're to understand their destruction 
And like I said, as a warning sign, avoid those things. Know that their end is certain. Know that their end is wrapped up in God's justice being fulfilled in them. Um, and and that's it. It's it's a short commentary. Uh, again, we don't get wrapped up in all the you know political p stuff from the newspaper, trying to tick and tie all those things out. As that's dispensationalism from basically the early 1900s through its corruption of today's church. And uh, that's what's out there. I, I don't like. I, I think it's a false interpretation of reading scripture. Um, but this is what it has for us. This is what's there. There's not a literal Babylon. There's not a literal um, prostitute type woman with tattoos on her head riding around drinking blood. I mean, it, it's all symbolic of the corruption that is currently in front of us. And, and you may look at the corruption in the world and, and it, in its separate spheres, you know, political corruption, medical corruption, morality, you know, the things in that stuff going downhill fast, and say, oh, well, it's all pieces and parts here and there. Well, what John is doing in these visions, he's pulling it all together in one core image. And if you would see it as this one core image, you'd say, wow, I would flee from a, a woman dressed like that, doing things like that, you know, sucking in the kings and, and people of this world and riding this horrific beast. You know, I would flee from something like that. But we see it around us every day, cut into these little smaller pieces, so to say, and we don't do anything about it. That's the warning that scripture is giving us go back and read the first three chapters the warnings to those churches it's the same thing they're to avoid their compromising with the world because the world's end is certain we don't have to know this exact date but just that its end is certain and from that aspect we avoid it that's it for this week. We'll look at chapter 18 next week. I uh, hope you enjoy this. You can subscribe, like, share, ask questions, comment below, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you next time. God bless.